Hello. In this video, I want to talk about Mendeley, which is a software management uh, tool. Um, this is um, a free tool that you can use in both Mac and Windows. There are quite a few different reference management tools um, that are out there, like EndNote, Zotero, um, and Ridcube. Mendeley is uh, one of the best uh, amongst um, these tools, and it has pretty much all the uh, functionalities that you need uh, for your uh, for your tasks. In this video, I talk about um, the basics of how to download and install Mendeley um, for the, the the application that you can use to organize your references, and also how to download and install the uh, Microsoft Word plugin that you can use to basically insert uh, citations in your documents. I also show you some of the advantages of using such tools in your everyday um, like task that you have. Alright, let's begin with um, the most basic part of it which is installing Mendeley. So you basically search for Mendeley in uh, your search engine and uh, pretty much the, set, the first um, like link that comes up is Mendeley, um, the one that we want. Um, when you click on it, uh, if you go to the download page, um, it automatically detects what operating system you have and it offers you that particular operating system. But if not, um, for some um, like reasons, you can also choose what uh, you want to download. And then you click on download Mendeley for desktop for, for whatever operating system that you have and it gives you a, um, an executable file, an installation file that then you can install um, on your machine. All right, so um, imagine I have uh, now installed the machine and I bring up my Mendeley desktop um, application. So I have I don't know how many uh, like citations I have. I have like 5,000 citations or, or articles in my library. Um, and all of these, or at least majority of these, come um, uh, like that I have, have their PDFs um, as well. So for example, these ones that you see with the PDF icon next to them um, have um, the, the, the PDF related to that, um, to that citation. You have option to create folders in this part to basically categorize your um, references into smaller groups. For example, um, in here I have um, all of the references for physical exercise or for sleep, for navigation or special memory. And also um, I have a section in here um, which is by default there, um, my publications and these are all the publications that I have. So basically you can organize your PDF files into folders and you can have them all in one place. And when you click on them, you can basically see the contents of that PDF file. So for example, um, imagine this one, I double click on it and it opens the, the, the paper and I can basically uh, look at the whole paper. You can also highlight uh, the paper just like any other um, PDF reader application that you have. So you can basically select and highlight uh, the text if you want. You can also add notes um, to your documents. Importance of highlighting and adding notes to your documents is that when you are in your main library, when you are in here and you search for a particular uh, topic um, or keyword, it can also search within your notes and also highlighted text, which is a very strong um, search um, option. So for example, in here, um, I say um, a sample keyword. Um, I basically copy it um, and I close it in here. And in here I search, for example, for that keyword and it detected that I have that in my notes. Um, I think if I didn't have it like exactly like that, it could, uh, it could also, no, I didn't search it that way. But, uh, oh, okay, it was because of the typo. So now it detected the, the, the file and it is there and you have it in your notes. So 
uh, it is very powerful because it searches within the articles that you have. So if you, for example, search for oscillatory activity, sorry, activity, uh, you see that these are, so one of them has this in the title, this word in the title, but the rest are actually the, the word appearing in the body of the text. So this is um, a very good uh, search um, option that you have. Another advantage of using such tools is that you can basically um, drag and drop um, articles um, to your library and it automatically detects the meta uh, metadata of the article and it adds it automatically to your library. For example, um, I go to all documents in here and I drag and drop this particular um, like article. I can drop it anywhere in this window. Um, I drop it and it added that. So if I go to recently added, that is basically the, the one that I added to my library. And it automatically detects that it is a PNAS paper, and this is the year of the publication, and volume, issue, pages, and the rest of the information that um, you need for citations. You also get, for example, DOI, which uh, for some formats of uh, citation is important to include. If your, the paper that you add is very, very new, Sometimes after a while, the volume and issue numbers or the page number changes. If you click on this um, icon here, lookup icon here, it basically updates the, con the, the information that it has in here and basically it gets the more recent information from the publisher of that, uh, of that article. And of course, if you click on it, you can, um, you can read the document. So now that I added that in my um, documents in my in my uh, database in here, I can actually drag and drop it to allocate it to a particular folder. For example, this one is about aging, is about developmental um, aspect, uh, so I drag and drop it in my aging folder. So now when I have my carousel on it, you see that it belongs to that to that folder. For example, this one does not belong to that one, it's actually unsorted, which means it doesn't belong to any particular folder. But this one it, uh, belongs to that folder. So this way, you can basically um, organize your documents into um, folders. So this is the basics of organizing your documents. Now, let's see how we can actually use this um, in your documents to cite different articles. To do that, you need to have Mendeley plugin. So basically, you go to the same page that you downloaded your Mendeley um, desktop application. In here, you have citation plugin. So if you go there, you basically can get um, cita Mendeley Cite, which is the plugin for Microsoft Word um, like application that you have. So you basically click on it and it will um, add that to your um, like Microsoft Word. Alternatively, you can go to tools in the main uh, application that you have. You can go to import Microsoft Word plugin, um, install Microsoft Word plugin, and it basically um, adds it to your, um, to your Microsoft Word application. Another, to, um, another important uh, functionality that I forgot to mention is that you can have a watch folder, which means whenever you add a file to that folder, it will automatically um, import it to your uh, Mendeley uh, database. So if you go to Tools, Options, if you go to Watch Folder, you see that, for example, in here, in Downloads, I have this folder watched, which means whenever I add a, a file to that folder, um, you, uh, that file is automatically imported to my Mendeley database. So for example, um, this, is, this is my database for 
Um, this is, these are the files in the PDF uh, folder. I can actually delete them because they are already imported to my Mendeley database. But in here, I'm going to add one extra um, article. So I just paste it and I pasted it in here and it automatically it, it is automatically added to my Mendeley database. So I have it here and all the information related to that file. So basically you can have this automatic importing functionality which is super helpful. Another functionality that is quite helpful is the file organizer option. So this means whenever you add a file to your database, a copy of that file is renamed and stored in your Mendeley desktop folder. So as you can see in here, I have this Mendeley desktop folder in documents in my D drive. And if I go there, it basically lists all the files, all the, so all the files that I have in my database included in here. So they are organized based on their year of publication. And inside that, we have um, the file names um, renamed to author name, the year of the publication, and also the name of the journal. So you get to have all of these files um, in one place. So this means if you change your computer later, um, you actually don't need to copy paste this folder. If you install Mendeley in another computer um, and link that to your to your account, it will automatically download the files on your local machine. Um, so this is another uh, important like functionality of uh, Mendeley. Okay, I mentioned that when you um, download Mendeley and when you run it for the first time, it asks you to either create an account or connect it to your current um, to the account that you already have. And as you can see, um, I have connected this this um, this application on my local machine to my account. This means I can access all my files online uh, from anywhere I want, basically. So this is another good advantage. So this is another a good advantage of using Mendeley. So if I go to a Mendeley website and log in, I basically get to access all my files in here. So um, this is me and these are all the files and folders just like my um, folders in my local machine. So um, these are all the files and I can also um, read them online if I want to. All right, so now I have installed Mendeley plugin um, either through the website or using these tools, invite, uh, sorry, um, install Microsoft Word plugin. And now I have this plugin installed on my machine. Okay, now let me show you how you can use Mendeley um, like tool to basically import um, citation to your document. So this is uh, Microsoft Word and if you go to references you see this Mendeley site um, option there. So if I click on it, it basically connects to your Mendeley account and it lists, lists all the files that are in all the citations that are in your, um, in your, in your database. And you can basically search in here and um, import the citations. For example, I say this is a sample text. And then at this point, I want to add a citation. So for example, I write, uh, I want to, for example, add this paper. So I type the name of the authors. You can also write the title of the paper. Um, and then it will list you the, the articles. You select the one that you want to add. So for example, that one or this one, it doesn't matter. You basically select the one that you uh, want to add. And then you say insert one citation. So now I added this. And this is now um, one of the formats that Mendeley has. This is Nature. 
uh, format, uh, citation format that I added. You can also change it to any other format that you want. So if you go to citation style, it gives you all the important or most commonly used uh, citation formats um, in here. If you cannot find your citation type in here, uh, you basically select another style and then you can basically search um, what you want in here. So for example, Harvard um, is one of them. So you search for it and it gives you um, the options for Harvard citation. Um, APA or American Psychological Association 7th edition is something that um, a lot of us use. So if I click on it, it gives me the option to update citation style. I click on it and now it is the um, this type. So this is now the, the way that is used in APA 7. And as you can see, when I click on it, um, you see this box around it, which shows that this text is automated. Okay, so now I have that uh, citation like reference in my text and somewhere um, like in the bottom of my document, I need to have a section uh, for my references. So for example, that is references section. And in here, I want to add my bibliography, basically all of my references. So what I need to do is I go to more, I click on insert bibliography. And if I do that, it says it will be added at that point. I say, okay. And now I have the bibliography here based on the style that you indicated. So this is now APA 7. For example, if I change it to nature, it will change it to that or IEEE. So it basically changed both the citation here and the text that is there. So um, these are very good so far. Now, another advantage is it can detect where in your text you have the citation and um, enter the appropriate text in there. For example, this is a, I write this is a sample text, and then I say this is another text with another reference, for example, and I want to add one more citation there. So I go, for example, to references, and I search for, for example, another paper. So I found, uh, I want to, for example, let's add, for example, this paper. So I have it. Uh, let's add, for example, multiple papers. Let's say three papers at the same time. I say insert three citations. It adds it like two to four. So it didn't say three. So it is clever that it is two to four. And it added the text uh, in here. And uh, that's it. But now imagine for some reason I change the order of these two texts. So of course this one needs to be one, two, three. And this one needs to be changed to four. So if I go to more and I say refresh references, it will change that to one to three and that, uh, and that one to four. And of course, the order of these um, is also changed. So this is another very good um, advantage of um, using this tool. And of course, if I go back to APA 7, it detects everything, it will change everything uh, accordingly. Look at this one. So it detected that the first author of those two papers are the same. So it didn't mention the rest of the author names. It just mentioned Javadi et al. 2011-2012. So it's a very clever um, Tool. Now let's, for example, add one more paper from 2012 and see how it um, reacts. So I add, for example, this paper from 2012. Um, oh, I, I, so if I want to add it to that list, let's see, actually, let's see what happens if I add it to that list. So I click on it. It says, so save change because now it is added here. So I have this one 2012 and that one 2012 and I say save change. So it detected to have it like that and then Javadi Waltz 2012 like that. And in here we have it um, as it should be. 
Um, and if you have, for example, two papers with the same authors, with the same year, then uh, you might want, uh, so it will automatically detect that it needs to have, for example, A and B. Um, at this moment, I don't have any, uh, but if you had, then it will automatically add A and B to the citations. Um, so it is a very clever uh, tool to have. If you want to remove a citation from your reference, you basically click there, and then you detect you detect which uh, which citation you want to remove. So, for example, I want to remove this one. I click I, I click on the cross, and then I say save changes, and now it will remove it from there and remove it from there. So this gives you a lot of flexibility in your citations. And um, importantly, you don't need to be worried about, for example, what volume number, issue number, or pa page number to indicate because they are automatically updated uh, based on the database that you have. And um, formatting is also right because this is italic, but the rest of the text is not, which is the way uh, to be. So I very strongly suggest you to use this tool. If you have not done it for your current document, that is absolutely fine. If you have the papers stored in a folder, you can basically um, select all your papers, all the PDF files that you have, and then drag and drop them all together to Mendeley um, application, and they will all uh, import it to the to, to, to the Mendeley application. Occasionally, if there is one um, paper that is not recognized uh, by Mendeley, you will see um, here a, a separate um, like folder that um, is red, and it shows that there are papers that could not be imported automatically. You click on it, and you can amend the, uh, the title, the, the author's name, um, and other information manually, and then save it. Usually what I do is that I found the paper online, I found the DOI of that paper, and I basically put that, and then I click on the lookup uh, icon, and then everything will be automatically updated based on that. If there is a paper that you do not have the PDF of, you can go to Add, so if you click on this um, like arrow down icon, you can say add entry manually and in here you can say what that is so you can say is it a journal article journal article is it a book chapter is it a conference proceeding whatever it is you basically select the type and then you enter um, the title and the authors journal name and the rest of the information so you can enter the information all manually, or, or alternatively, you can find the DOI of the paper that you're looking for, and you can add that in here. So I found one paper online that I think I don't have it in my website, in my uh, database. I add the DOI in here, and you see it is all empty, but when I click on the lookup icon, it detects what uh, paper that is, it basically gets all the information, um, author names, uh, name of the journal, and basically all the information that you need. And then you click on save, and that will be there for you. So either you enter this information manually, or you find the DOI of that paper, and you enter it here, and you just click on uh, like look up. Um, the way that you can find the um, the the name, the, the DOI of a paper, usually I use um, Google Scholar. So you basically type uh, scholar.google.com or .co.uk and then you search for a, a paper, search for the paper that you have. So for example, let me search for uh, cathodal stimulation, for example, TDCS, it doesn't matter. And imagine, for example, I want to access, I want to get the DOI of this paper. It's interesting that it is my own paper. So I click on it, and when you go to this website, pretty much all the websites uh, um, indicate the DOI. And in here, well, I can see it there, but if you cannot find it, you can say, you 
search for Control F or uh, Command F in Apple, you say um, DOI, and there you go, you have it there. So then you select this part of the DOI. So once again, so you, you leave out this, the beginning, and you basically select the, this part of the DOI, and then you say copy it, so Control C or Command C in Apple, and then you come to Mendeley, you click on this bottom array, enter manually DOI, and then you click on it, and it tells you what paper that is. So you can basically um, import the files there manually. So you, you, you would do this only if you do not have the PDF of that file. Um, yeah, so you don't usually do this thing uh, manually. All right, um, one final point. Imagine you want to begin a sentence um, with the name of the authors. Um, this is something that you can do, for example, in here. I want to say Jawadi et al. or, or um, 2015, something like that. For example, um, did a research on brain assimilation, for example. Um, this is this is all right, but what I usually do is that I don't type it like manually there, um, like that. I usually use the Mendeley referencing to do that. So the citation that I want to refer to is actually this citation. So what I'm going to do is I put my cursor there, and um, for example, I search for the paper that I want to add. For example, this is the paper I want to add. So imagine this is, for example, the paper. I say insert citation, and I have it there. Uh, the reason that we have this A dot is that um, there is an inconsistency in my name. So this is A dot occasionally, and sometimes it is A dot H dot. This means I need to go back in my Mendeley database and correct it. Um, to have the same initials, but that doesn't matter here. So what I want to do is I want to change this to something like this or something similar. So I click on it and then I can say manually overwrite the citation. I click and in here I can write whatever I want. For example, I can say Jawadi uh, and colleagues 2015 and then the rest of the, uh, the text. So I, I write it there and I say save changes. So now my citation is like that. And at this point, I can say did a research and the rest of it. Did a research um, on brain assimilation. So this way, um, the citation is automatically added in here in my references. So this is basically uh, this citation I added. Um, and I have the text automatically there. If you want to revert it back to the original format, you can basically click on it and then you say revert to default. So this way um, you can add whatever style of citation you want to add in the text um, as you go. Um, for example, if you have a table and you want to cite the papers in a particular format in the table, you can do the same in here. And um, a couple of more final points um, is that if you make a change in your database in Mendeley, you need to click on sync button here before you can actually see the changes in your Microsoft Word uh, document. So for example, if I, um, so I have, for example, this document, I say download PDF, um, I save it to my watched folder, and when I do that, it automatically comes uh, to my database. Oh, now this is very interesting. So this particular paper, um, Mendeley was not able to detect the metadata automatically. That is why it has created this extra folder called Needs Review to basically for you to have a look at it to, um, to, to indicate the missing data. So as you can see, it is missing DOI, uh, journal name, volume, and the rest of the information. 
As I said earlier, uh, what we can do to make the process um, more automatic, we can copy paste the DOI from this link. So from there, I copy it and then I paste it here. And I click on this lookup button. And as you can see, it automatically detected the rest of the information and everything is fine now. This is a seal unknown. Um, it should be changed to brain sciences. It is a seal unknown. It takes a few uh, moments to do that. What I can do is to, to force it to change. I say in here, I say details are correct. Do that. And when I go to recently added document, um, you see that it renamed the file to the correct uh, journal name. So I added this file and it is in here. But if I go to the Microsoft Word um, like, um, document that I have in here, it is not listed in here yet. So the name of the um, author names were like Lazaro. If I do that, it okay. It's, it finds some papers with Lazaro and then there Tony, so it couldn't find it. But if I click on sync button in here, it takes a moment to sync your whole database. And as you can see, it is uploading this file. It uploaded to internet. And now I need to come in here and say um, refresh. So let me actually do it. So if I say in here, I added the rest of the file, like um, author name in here, it cannot still find it. What I need to do is I need to say refresh references, and then it will update the link between the, your Word document and Mendeley database. And now when you make a small change in your search query, it can detect it now. So this is how you can add it. And uh, this is basically the, the, the citation that I added there. Okay. Um, so whatever change that you make in here, you need to sync it and then go to your Word document, say refresh be before you can actually apply the change to your document. Um, another uh, point is sometimes authors come with different first names. So the same author might um, have, for example, abbreviated name uh, in one article and full name, um, full first name in another article. As you can see, these two very likely are the same person. So what I can do is, um, instead of like going here, going here and renaming it, so this is the noise, if I'm not mistaken, the pronunciation, oh, not that one. So I clicked on a, an empty area here, and then I clicked it, um, and this is now J. Instead of coming here and change it to Jenny, what I can do is I can drag and drop it to that name. And this way, um, the name that we have in here, which was this one, will be automatically changed to Jenny. So it detects. Um, the, the match and automatically change the name to the one that you want. Um, if you want, we can try one more time. Um, oh, these are only the recent, uh, recently added ones. Um, there are, this thing happened quite a lot. So for example, these two, um, they are different names. Um, or if you have multiple articles belonging to one category, you can basically drag and drop it and it will change the name to, to, to this particular one. And then to make this reflect on your document, again, you need to say sync. It takes a few moments. And then you go in your document, you go to the more option here, you say refresh references, and that is it. Um, all the changes are now reflected to your document. All right, um, that is it. Good luck with your writings. Bye.